Hey guys, welcome back to my channel. Today I wanted to talk to you guys about my autoimmune disease. Pemphidus obiaris. So Pemphidus obiaris is an autoimmune disease that attacks the skin and the lining of the mouth. It causes blisters on the inside of the mouth and it also causes blisters on your skin. And then when those blisters pop, they become these scabs that just never, ever, ever, ever heal. So what's going on with the body is the body thinks that your own skin cells are an outside thing. So normally when you get sick and you have viruses in your body, your immune system kicks in and tries to attack those um, invaders, I guess which they would call it. Um, and whenever that happens, your body actually gets mistaken. Whenever you have an autoimmune disease, your body gets mistaken um, thinking that your own, whatever it is, skin cells or whatever part of your body that it's attacking, it thinks that that's an outside source. And so it attacks it. And then you get symptoms just like asthma is an autoimmune disease, MS is an autoimmune disease, diabetes is an autoimmune disease, um, allergies are autoimmune diseases. Uh, all of these things manifest in different ways. So it's not contagious um, because it's an autoimmune disease. No autoimmune diseases are contagious. Also, it's, it's not hereditary, so it doesn't pass on from generation to generation. So genetic factors are important, but other factors are needed to trigger into activity. Okay, so now that we got all that uh, technical mumbo jumbo out of the way, let's get into the story. So this all started when I met the love of my life. Okay, so when I was 19 years old, I used to work for Cricket Wireless and my husband uh, used to work for FedEx and he used to be the guy that would bring us in all of our posters and all the kind of stuff for the store. We started talking. Um, he was going to get a different route and so he was going to go to California to visit his family for Thanksgiving and then when he came back, he was going to be in, another, in a different route. So before he left on his trip, he told me that he wasn't going to come back to my store and he was training another guy. And so when this other guy started coming that whole week that he was gone, I would always tell him, hey, tell the other guy I said hi and tell the other guy I said hi. And so anyways, in this whole mess that we ended up figuring out later, um, my husband came in to see me one day after his shift was done. He had gone to a barber that was there in that same shopping center that the cricket was in. And so he came in after he had gotten all lined up and all handsome and everything. And um, he came in the store and he started talking to me and was being, um, he was being a little bit weird. I didn't know. We both had a misunderstanding of the whole situation. And so he thought that I had told the other guy to ask him to come in the store. But I never said that to the other guy. And so I just saw him come in later, you know, in the evening when we were about to close and I didn't really know what he was doing there. So anyways, we ended up, um, I ended up getting his phone number because he had asked me for my phone number and I said, no, let me just get your phone number because I wasn't sure if I was actually even going to contact him. I didn't really know too much about him. I knew that he was older than me and I didn't know if he was married because he always had, he was always wearing gloves and I didn't know if he was married. I, I just, I didn't really know anything about him. And so I just said, give me your phone number. And so I took his phone number and that was on a Friday. And so on a Monday night, I text him and we were texting. So that day that I texted him, which was Monday, um, we ended up talking on the phone and he was talking to, we were talking on the phone for like two hours and he was talking to me about a computer that he was fixing, probably those two whole hours. But anyways, um, we ended up going on a date, we ended up falling in love, we ended up getting married, so it all worked out great. But, um, I was 19 at that time and so I started taking birth control. And after I started taking the birth control, I started to notice that I had some um, like little blisters in my mouth. I would get like little blisters in my mouth 
So I started getting these little blisters in my mouth every so often and I had this like pimple on my scalp that I thought was like a pimple or a bug bite. I didn't really know what it was. But that's how it all started and I didn't think too much of it. I started going to the dentist. The dentist told me that I have like really bad gingivitis and like for a person my age. I went to the dentist and was getting all my work done and the thing on my head uh, still kept getting worse. Like it was just like getting a little bit bigger and a little bit bigger and it just like wouldn't go away. And the blisters in my mouth would still come up every so often. It wasn't all the time, but I would still get little blisters in my mouth. And so all that stuff was going on um, and we decided that we wanted to get married and move to Texas. And so in 2013, we got married in June, and in June, just a couple weeks after we got married, we moved to Texas, which is where we've been. Um, and so we got here to Texas mid-June, um, and then my blisters actually started getting worse. So there's a ton of mosquitoes here in Houston, like a ton, and I was getting bit by mosquitoes a lot, and all those little bites were turning into little blisters. And I thought that it was weird, but I just thought that maybe it was like something in the freaking mosquitoes over here in Houston. I was like, oh my goodness, they're just like huge. And every time they bite you, it turns into a blister. But nobody else was getting that. It was just me. So that was weird. But those little blisters were so tiny and they would pop and they would just like go away. But I was still getting blisters in my mouth. And I actually started getting more scabs on my head. Well, that I started to notice and they were little but I started to no notice more scabs on my head so then one day in playing around I ended up getting carpet burn on my back and it turned into this really huge huge blister and I was already getting like scabs like on the side of my nose like I had these two scabs on the side of my nose which I didn't really know what they were but I thought that they were like pimples that had gotten infected because that's kind of how it started off it looked like a pimple on my nose it probably was a pimple and because it was irritation on my skin my body just started attacking it and turned into a scab so I just thought that it was like pimp like pimples that had gotten infected um, so I also still didn't think too much of it but yeah, I ended up getting a carpet burn on my back and ended up getting this huge blister. And that's when I was like, you know what? This is not normal. Like, this is not okay. And so I started going to um, these couple of doctors and they didn't really know what was wrong with me. And finally, I found this dermatologist and she was the best. Like, she was just so awesome. I loved my dermatologist. And she knew exactly what was wrong with me. And that was in November of that same year of 2013 was when I ended up getting a biopsy done on that uh, on that blister of the carpet burn on my back which is really gross the way that they do that the way that they do a biopsy but she ended up doing a biopsy on my back and then that's how I was diagnosed with so anyways they put me on medication they put me on immunosuppressants and steroids and the immunosuppressants were obviously to suppress my immune system so that my body wouldn't keep attacking my own body. Um, they had told me that it takes about three months for the medication to actually kick in. And so meanwhile, I was on high doses of steroid. So these medications made me gain weight a lot. My face got really round and puffy and swollen. I lost a lot of hair from my head, like a lot of my hair started falling out, but at the same time, I was getting like a ton of hair on my body, like I seriously looked like Sandy when she goes into hibernation, like no joke, that's exactly how I looked. And it was just so weird. I was always super tired, I was always having cravings, I had a lot of cravings, I was eating a lot of junk food. So the medication was horrible. I had to keep taking this med- This was supposed to be my forever medication though. I was supposed to get- Once the immunosuppressants kicked in, I was supposed to get off the steroids. But it wasn't like working out that way. It was still taking a long time. I was still getting scabs everywhere. My face was just covered in them. I flared up so bad. My back was all covered. I actually didn't really get any scabs. Like, 
below the waist like on my legs or on my feet or anything like that it was mostly on my face on my scalp on my back on my chest I had a few on my arms but it was mostly just that area and in my mouth I started to get really bad blisters in my mouth which made it super super hard to eat I couldn't eat and whenever I was so depressed and I was so horrible I felt so horrible I would cry and then the tears would literally like burn my cheeks it was just miserable so my husband and I of course wanted to have children but we were told that while I was taking this medication it wasn't advisable to get pregnant because my body could either reject the baby or the medication could cause the baby some side effects that we just didn't know anything about and so that was just heartbreaking for us because this was supposed to be my forever medication they had told me that I mean any autoimmune disease is not curable and that I was supposed to take this medication forever and so that meant that we were never going to have children so we started really considering um, adoption I mean we weren't gonna adopt then we were still a little bit young but we thought that we were gonna at some point have to adopt kids so we started going to church we started praying we started um, being good and we had revelation well me mostly um, about quitting my medication and I know that's horrible and that's not advisable and you're not supposed to do that I was very 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 certain that that's something that I was supposed to do so I decided to slowly get off of my medication besides we weren't gonna have our insurance anymore and we had really good insurance at that time and we were no longer gonna have it so they weren't gonna cover my medication and my medication was really expensive so I was also trying to make sure that I had enough medication kind of to keep me going for a little bit longer until we figured out what we were going to do but I started going to a naturopath and getting a lot of vitamin supplements and I started changing my diet a lot this is when I decided that I, I needed to change the way that I ate and so once mixing all of those things together weaning off my medication changing my diet taking supplements I started to do all of these things in combination after three months I found out that I was expecting a little baby boy so during my pregnancy because your body naturally suppresses the immune system so that it doesn't reject the baby I started to get a lot better my scabs all started to heal I started to feel better I actually was feeling better during my pregnancy than I was before so ever since that happened ever since I got pregnant I had my baby my pemphigus kind of went into remission so that was two years ago when I had my son and ever since then I have only gotten a little bit of scabs on my head but I have changed my diet so much I have become more natural I use a lot of natural products I made a huge huge lifestyle change I'm not gonna say that I don't eat junk food every now and then that I don't eat cake or that I don't eat candy I love candy I love chocolate I eat chocolate all the time still this is why I wanted to make these videos is because my autoimmune disease has kind of gone into remission I guess not really I still get some flare-ups sometimes but it's not nearly as bad as it used to be so today I am 26 years old I have been going through this whole process for six years of finding out what I had going through this horrible two years of uh, flaring up really really badly my husband and I really really got closer together uh, because of this autoimmune disease it strengthened our relationship so much we got closer to God in all of this time I have made so many changes to my diet to my lifestyle to even the way that I think because you have to change the way that you think when you have an autoimmune disease like that so now I am expecting baby number two and things are awesome and although I still get some flare-ups every now and then I just want you to know that if you have an autoimmune disease like that it doesn't have to be the end of the world you can still do something to make it better any little bit helps 
any little change that you make helps. So this is my autoimmune disease story. In the comments, let me know about yours. I love to hear other people's stories and how they have overcome uh, their autoimmune diseases or anything that they have at all. I always love to hear any information from you guys. I hope that this video was helpful to you in some kind of way. If you are going through this, I hope that you know that it does get better. Thank you guys for watching my video. Please like, share, comment, subscribe, and hit the notification bell so you don't miss out on all my new videos. This is your girl Gabby. Till next time.